Hi, everyone. Welcome to this exclusive dialogue with uh, Aston Martin Red Bull Racing. The topic for the discussion today is on the real-time collaboration at the cutting edge. And with me in this discussion are my two esteemed speakers. I have Zoe Shilton, who is the head of technical partnerships, Aston Martin Red Bull Racing. Welcome, uh, Zoe. Hi. Good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm glad to see you. And I also have Kevin Chan, who is the Senior Manager, ASEAN, Pre-Sales Engineering, Citrix Systems. Welcome, Kevin. Hey, hey Rama. Nice seeing you guys. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this discussion. I mean, it's really uh, something quite different. Uh, you know, it's not very often that we get to talk about the racing, Formula One especially. So uh, as we all know, the world of the Formula One racing is dynamic, it's ever-changing, and uh, work happens at lightning fast speeds, right? Sometimes mere milliseconds can separate the first place from an off-podium finish. What is the most crucial element in the race to give the team the advantage it needs? Zoe? Okay, I'm just going to grab a slide to help me answer this. So the key for us in how we approach success on the track really doesn't start at the track. It starts way back in the factory. It starts with every member of our team. And this is one of the reasons that we've been working with Citrix for over 10 years now, which is to bring all of the members of our team, whether they are in the UK, back at our factory or out at the racetrack, in contact with the right data that they need to make data driven decisions. So really Citrix are helping our team work virtually anywhere. A really interesting sort of parameter that we underpin our entire operation with is data analysis. Data drives every choice that we make, both in the design, the setup, the manufacture, and then the racing and operation of our car. It's what helps us to make the right decisions and learn from our mistakes and learn from our successes. And Citrix is helping us to get the right data to the right people in our team to make those crucial decisions all the time. Thanks, thanks, uh, Zoe. So, uh, so with, with that, uh, my second question would be: So, you know, there's so many things happening at the racetrack. You know, uh, with the, the data flowing in, as well as you know the operations uh, that's happening all around you. So what would you think are the most critical technology services to enhance the real-time data insight capabilities and team collaboration, right? To improve your on-track performance for the, uh, for the team. So this is a really interesting question and quite a broad ranging question. We have a lot of connectivity that's supporting us when we're live during a race weekend. First of all, we have the team back in the factory, which is around 800 people based in Milton Keynes in the UK. And this team have designed and built this really complicated high performance race car. When we send the team out to the track for the race weekend, they're only about 10% of that number. They're a relatively small group. So they need a bit of extra support. So I've got this little diagram that hopefully helps to explain a bit more how that group of support network is structured. In the UK, we have a building which is connected directly to every single racetrack. So our factory and within that, the AT&T operations room is connected by a private dedicated network provided by AT&T to every single circuit that we go to. This means that whilst our engineers are trackside and our guys are running the car on the circuit for the race weekend, they can have the support of additional engineering resource that's based back here in the UK. So trackside, we have various different groups that need that support. We have obviously the driver in the car out on the track doing his thing. We have our pit wall. So these are the guys and girls that actually sit in the pit lane that are talking to the drivers and having that final line of communication through to the driver. But the radio comms to the driver has got to be very simple. In order to get to that point, you need a lot more data to drive those decisions. When should we do the pit stops? When should we change tires? And which tire strategy is going to be the best one to get us to the end of the race in front? Now, what's really unique about the way that we use Citrix to help this, this group of people is that back in the operations room in the UK, we have some specialist engineers in a few different groups 
One of them is helping our strategy. So the majority of our strategy decision making is actually happening back here in the UK. This team are simulating millions of possible outcomes using existing race data to understand where we should do our pit stops and which tires we should change onto at each stop. This is a really critical decision making process and has to often be updated in real time during the race. And we also have groups of engineers such as our aerodynamics group. The aerodynamicists want to access that live data as well, but they also want to compare it against historical data to understand if the car is performing on track as well as it should be. And if there are any small tweaks or setup changes we can make to improve that. So they're using Citrix machines that are actually hosted on a tiny data center track side that sits in our garage and is ingesting the live data coming in from the car. So they can access the data as if they were right there at the circuit. In reality, at the circuit, we only have one strategist and no aerodynamicists. But in practice, because of that additional layer of data connectivity that Citrix is providing, we have the equivalent of dozens of strategists and 10, to 10 or so engineers looking at aerodynamics that don't need to be there at the circuit to do their job. This means that we can get more expertise involved in all of that data-driven decision-making and hopefully make better real-time decisions on the track to improve our performance. It's a complicated picture, but all together, this team make it work with Citrix. Well, that's what, <laughs> this is really amazing. You know, and as I said <laughs> earlier, right, uh, as a, a casual spectator like me, we don't get a chance to know exactly what's happening behind the scenes and what you've just shared with us is really amazing, right? And, uh, you know, it, it reminds me of uh, uh, being in a command and control center in the middle of a battlefield, you know, there are so many things <laughs> happening around. Yeah. You, yeah. Right. And, and, and yet still, you know, you've got to, you got to, you, you got to take it all in and, and make some sense out of it and, and make sure that at the end of the day, the, the driver benefits from it. Am I right to say that? Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, condensing the opinions of over 50 different engineering like entities mm. into that one driver's earpiece is quite a challenge in itself. So we have a lot of procedure to make sure that that's kept very simple for the driver and easy to follow. That's right. Yeah. So my next question is for you, Kevin. So Kevin, so uh, what is it about Citrix uh, solutions that's able to meet the demands, right? Of the teams in the world's uh, most competitive motorsport? Yeah, no, definitely. Thanks, Robin. And I think Zoe touched on a few of those things. So I'm just gonna expand out on those items. Um, one, I think it has to have that ability to deliver that performance. So they're working with milliseconds of connectivity and information pulling in. So the platform that's delivering this needs to be able to keep up with that. Um, so the folks who are using or the engineers who are using high graphics needs, um, data processing, the applications in the back end, absolutely need to be able to do that. Um, and these complex systems also usually have some additional peripherals that are attached to it. So you need to have a system that is compatible to be able to do all those items and you know plug and play with all those items. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would have to say like building in the security around that because obviously tracks like you have data that's there, it's going back and forth, um, files are being uploaded, but at the same time, do you wanna have piece of information just lying around on endpoints? And so you kind of alleviate that as a potential uh, security concern um, because that IP is so critical to our customers, and in this case specifically um, to the Aston Martin Red Bull Racing Team. Um, they have all these configurations that are needed. And so when we put that all together, I think that really delivers a solution, a platform that is really critical to the Red Bull Racing Team um, yeah. from that perspective. But, you know, Kevin, the worst thing that could happen in a race right, <laughs> is when the systems go down, right? So you're talking yeah. about yeah. So besides the performance, right? So how does Citrix really build resilience, right? Into the solutions? Sure, yeah. Um, I, I think it's a, by the way, it's a two-way approach to this. Um, you know, the Aston Martin Red Bull Racing Team and the Citrix team, we are actually an innovation partner. So we actually challenge our systems a lot. So we actually work with their team to give us feedback on how the system should be operating and performing. Um, and so they're usually one of our beta testers and early adopters to try something out, um, but they do it very pragmatically. like they will test the system out to its full. So I would have to say one thing is, it goes on both sides. The adopters are truly testing out the system and giving feedback um, to us to say, hey, this is what we really need within the platform and it's not meeting our, it's not meeting what we need right now or demands um, and we can go back and adjust. 
But two, uh, from the Citrix side, we are building in a very resilient platform. Um, and so we've worked with the, um, the racing team to make sure in the engineering side, is everything configured in a high availability manner? Are we ready for a DR scenario? What happens? And are the components set up so that you have sub-second failovers? Because you know, they are working with milliseconds and you know, from a network side of packet drops, we are looking at, hey, when we get some sort of a drop, how quickly can we switch you over so that the engineers, the aerodynamicists, the scientists, they can keep what they're doing and funneling 50 decisions back to that driver so they can keep making the right decisions along the way. So to me, I think that's where we really look at the resilience piece around that. Right. So Zoe, uh, from your perspective, right, based on what Kevin has said, right, uh, how do you think, were there other areas that you think Citrix, you know, has added value, right, to the, the, the team at the track, especially? Absolutely, yeah. And I've got one more slide that I want to share with you just to, to give you an idea of the breadth that Citrix are touching within our factory. So we've been working with Citrix for over 10 years now, and we have hundreds of Citrix users across our business. The number of use cases is absolutely incredible and I think very, very diverse in what we're using it for, which is really interesting. So we've already talked about what the track side engineers are using this for to access data that's back in the factory. And also what our operations room team are using Citrix for to access that live data at the track side. But across our business, we're a very unique sort of company. We do full nose to tail design life cycle of a vehicle. So we go all the way from the drawing board, all the way through um, R&D, prototyping, manufacturing, racing, and then retiring. The whole process of the vehicle has to come through us. And it all happens on the one location. So we have, at the beginning of that process, our designers in the design office, a lot of them have now moved on to using, rather than having a really big, expensive, you know, desktop computer to run their CAD systems on, so the computer-aided design uh, programs that we use, we use a Siemens program, which is really good, but it's, it's really high demand in terms of graphics and, and processing power um, because we're creating incredibly detailed graphic design. So previously that was run on you know, desktop computers, which are expensive to replace, can't, they can't be portable. Um, and we'd started to move in this process of taking more of those onto Citrix machines. So virtualizing it, placing that resource back into our data center, and you know, using a thin endpoint client for those, for those designers. When we obviously came into the situation of COVID where a lot of those guys had to start working from home, this became really, really important because then they were working on their home internet connection you know, with a, a laptop that perhaps is lower spec and they were still able to continue working, which has been incredibly important to the continuity of the business. Okay, thanks, thanks so much, Zoe. So one final question for, for Kevin, right? So Kevin, the, uh, it's pretty obvious that the F1 uh, really epitomizes the practice of remote workplaces, right? And so, so what are some of the lessons that uh, we can learn from the uh, Formula One and some of what uh, Zoe has shared? And uh, how do you think some of these lessons can be applied to uh, enterprises in general? Yeah, yeah no, definitely. That's a, that's a really loaded question just because, you know, that short time period of feeling some of those questions that Zoe got earlier now. Um, I think there's a few things, right? I think, uh, you know, Zoe mentioned a few things around like productivity and that just kind of instant switch on and be able to move from um, on site back home or work from home and work from anywhere really uh, and not having a drop in productivity. I think that's been a huge thing. It's keeping your um, business agile enough so that you can lift and shift really quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And so enterprises that are very concerned about like data productivity, data sovereignty, I 100% respect and understand that. But Zoe mentioned something just uh, in her last comment where they have data only staying in the Milton Keynes uh, data center, but they have people who are logging in to access that. So to me, that's a way to actually control um, data sovereignty. And as we become more and more global, especially enterprises, um, giving that type of an access to your employees um, and that limited uh, access needs or requirements that you can put on is so critical now, especially as your workforce also now becomes more and more global. Um, you're looking at engineers that are across different geos, different time zones, and they're going to be coming at different places um, from home. So at this point, you have so many entry points that security now becomes even more of a concern. It's always been a concern, but everyone thought, I'll just have 800 engineers on site or 800 employees on site. And that's where my security is. 
Now I have 750 employees working from home, mm -hmm. um, coming in from different locations and the 50 that are on site. So how do you start kind of looking at that from a security perspective? So you wanna start planning for that. Um, and then I think the biggest thing is because you're working from home now, you don't have an office to go into with an IT department to say, can I get a replacement device? This, this is now mm -hmm. down. That's, that luxury is out. Um, and so now you have to be comfortable and finding a way with security policies and postures to allow your employees to use advice that they're comfortable on. Because at the end of the day, they're not going to go to an IT support personnel and say, I'm not used to this device. How do I do this? They probably know how to do that same function that they need on their own personal device because they're comfortable with that um, and to get support. So I think by the time we look at this, it's going to be you have to relook at your security strategy, you know, how policy wise and relooking and seeing are these kind of legacy concepts and do we need to change that? Um, where people are coming in and then just that ability to have higher productivity and maintaining that because I think that's what's going to keep you as a competitive edge as well against your peers and against other folks you're working with. Good, good. Thanks, thanks, yeah. Kevin. It's a pity uh, time flies as they say when you're having fun. Uh, the session is going to come to an end, but I uh, really have to thank both uh, Zoe and, and Kevin. Uh, it's been a really interesting dialogue. Uh, it was pretty obvious that there was a lot that goes, there is a lot that goes on behind the scenes, right? Uh, especially when we as uh, viewers, you know, when we watch any kind of uh, Formula One racing, uh, we don't realize, right, that there's so many moving parts, right? And it pretty obvious that technology really is the big difference towards uh, winning and losing, right? On that note, thank you very much, Zoe, and thank you very much, Kevin, for joining me in this very exclusive dialogue. Thank you very much. Bye.